There are so many different shots in badminton and some of these shots are very easy and perfect to learn the basics for beginners. Others are insanely hard and only a handful of people on this planet can actually use them during a match. In this video I want to give my view on 10 different shots and rank them from very easy to insanely hard and also try to demonstrate all of them. Already a bit afraid of the last few on the list but yeah let's see and let's get started. In my eyes one of the easiest shots or maybe the easiest shot in badminton is the backhand lift and this is for many reasons. On one hand you always have the racket, the shuttle and also the opponent in front of you so you can you do not have to turn your head or your body and it is quite easy to time all these things at the same moment. You can practice that also maybe by just playing the shuttle up always with a backhand grip and then you get a lot of repetitions and try to work on basic principles like the swing of the arm or rotation of the racket. So very easy in that terms and also another advantage in my eyes like you can really accelerate the elbow forward. In general you can also say that the cross one is a little bit easier, the natural movement, but of course you can also play it straight. So coaches sometimes naturally start with the forehand surf because then you can also start the rally. That's the first shot in a normal rally. But in my eyes it is a bit more challenging than the backhand underhand shots I just showed you. Because now you have to hit the shuttle a little bit beside you and also a problem with the surf. You have to throw the shuttle forward so you have to get the timing and the distance right and this is maybe uh, for beginners sometimes quite challenging so I think the underhand shots are easier and also by starting out hitting it straight up instead of uh, that forward hitting movement you need for the service. Okay so next up smash and clear number three and four and I have a really hard time ranking those two shots because they are so similar in terms of what you do during the movement. Maybe for the smash you need a little bit more power and need to be a little bit more locked in your wrist to um, also generate maximum power during the shot but basically the shots are almost the same. The biggest difference is maybe the point of impact. For the clear you hit it a little bit more over you. And for the smash you hit it more in front of you to get it into that downwards trajectory. So in one of my latest videos I was showing you different types of drop shots and the first or basic drop um, is my number five and I rank it a little bit more difficult actually than a smash and a clear and maybe that is a little bit surprising for some of you as you might think okay for a drop you don't need any power and it is quite easy to just play it short behind the net and it is a lot harder to play it long or to play a hard smash but I think there it is important that we differentiate between a good drop shot and a shitty drop shot because many players already show very early that they will play a drop and then in my eyes uh, a drop is very useless. So here for example we can see a drop shot um, yeah, that is very easy to read and it has a totally different starting position than a smash and when you get into this starting position good opponents will see right away okay my opponent will not play anything with power he will not play a clear or smash so I can already run forward. <laughs> Number six is another drop shot. This time uh, I decided to pick the reverse slice. So a lot more challenging than the normal drop because now you are not hitting the shuttle clean but you kind of make a window wiper movement. I would describe it from right to left as a right-handed player. And by doing that you change the direction of the speed and you also change the tempo. Two versions of that, the little bit easier one is the cross court reverse slice from the round the head corner. So there you can see the shuttle um, loses a lot of tempo and flies cross court. A little bit more challenging in terms of timing is the one from the forehand side that goes long line. So here you can see it looks a lot like a cross shot because the racket moves from right to left but the shuttle flies straight. So uh, if you play that with good timing and also wait very long, make a fast racket movement, you can deceive a lot of opponents with these reverse slices. <laughs> A lot of people are afraid of the backhand clear and yes I rank it also pretty late but I'm only talking about a backhand clear under pressure behind the body. Basically the movement for the backhand clear is not that hard and it's quite similar to shot number one I showed you, the backhand lift. So if you compare this arm movement here in front of me with the arm movement of the backhand clear it is pretty much the same. There are a few slight differences that make it a lot harder when you are up here 
One of it is the timing and also the positioning. So now I have to turn away from my opponent and I do not have the uh, situation where I see my racket, the shuttle and the opponent all the time. So in terms of timing, it is more challenging. Then you also have to turn the grip a little bit. And here behind me, I cannot make any use anymore of the thumb. In front of me, I can use a lot of finger power with tightening the grip and using also the thumb here. Behind me, I have to rely completely on rotation of the forearm. And especially in this direction that I needed for backhand shots, this outwards rotation, it is a little bit harder to generate power compared to this inwards rotation you have for forehand shots or smashes. Also, because you are more used to it, you probably do that way more often than the other way around. So that's why I rank it that high. It is a little bit challenging to create that much power just with rotation. And as I said, behind the body, you have to rely on this kind of movement mainly, and you do not have the thumb to support. Behind the body. It is important to still stay relaxed. Okay, now we start to get to the really tricky stuff. And next up on my list is the cross defense and singles. If the attack is not that precise and comes a little bit more to the middle, it is quite easy to play a cross court defense or sometimes it's even the natural movement. But as soon as the smash is a little bit more to the line and you have to hit it beside you or even behind you, then it gets super difficult to play a cross court defense. What makes this shot so difficult is that you have to be really fast with your racket, so you have to get out quickly, but still keep a loose grip and then uh, use the fingers and then also use your wrist to guide it cross court with a very short movement because you do not have time for a long swing and you have to try to get a little bit beside the shuttle and then uh, play it cross with a very short movement. Something totally insane in my eyes is uh, players that can play that from a dive to the side. Uh, I've seen that a few times now from Lo Ken Yu or early also from Li Chong Wei. And this is just incredible how you can dive and then still be able to play variations in your defense just like that here. So spin shots at the net are already something advanced, but just spinning it at the net is something I would have ranked a little bit earlier, maybe around number six. To bring spin shots on number nine, we have to make or be able to play them in specific situation. And that's when your opponent already played a spin shot at you. This makes it super difficult because now you do not only need the technical skills to spin the shuttle, but you have to observe first what kind of direction the shuttle is spinning into. You have to spin into the same direction again. If you don't do that, uh, the shuttle will probably fly anywhere. You have no control at all. And you can imagine it a little bit like if you are spinning a coin. If you want to keep it going, then you have to uh, hit it into the same direction again. The other way around, it will not work. Besides that challenge, you also have to find the right timing that you are not only hitting feathers, but you're also hitting the top of the shuttle. And this is also not easy because if the opponent played a really good spin shot, the feathers will point down quite long time. And if you now try to hit and only hit the feathers, there's also no way of playing a controlled spin shot back. So you have to wait for the perfect moment. And also, as I said, find out what kind of spinning direction the shuttle has. A good way to practice a spin of a spin is just playing net singles or net game. Uh, the favorite game of my former Chinese coach, Su Yan Wang, who is totally insane and completely unbeatable when you play him at the net. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's combine shot number six and number seven for mine number 10, an insanely hard shot, the reverse slice with the backhand. So basically, once again, like with the reverse slice I showed you, you do not hit a clean shot, but you wipe from this time left to right if you are a right-handed player. Um, but you try to do it with a backhand. So also like your back facing the net and you have to try to do that wiping movement outside in. And what would happen if it works? It looks a lot like a cross shot also with speed. So maybe a cross clear or a cross fast drop with the backhand. But if you do it the right way, it should go straight and also land close behind the net. 
also many times I see players doing that in the training. So uh, yes, it is possible to play that shot in the training, maybe when you do multi-feeding, maybe also when you do a training match, but only very few players are able to perform that shot under pressure in a match. Actually, I only know one person who does it on a regular basis, and this is Tai Tzu Ying. Even when she plays against the best women single players in the world, she can still score with that shot, and this is maybe also why she's maybe considered the most skillful player at the moment. I know there are tons of other shots that I haven't included in the video, and if you want me to rank them also here in this ranking, let me know it in the comments below, or also let me know if you would change the order. So the difficulty for the shots is not always the same. Some come pretty easy to you, other ones are pretty hard, even if I rank them a bit lower. So let me know it in the comments what you think about different shots and the difficulty. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, share it with your badminton friends, and follow my channel for more videos, and then see you next time. Bye bye.